Buddhist Legends 8. The Chief Disciples 11. They who think to find the truth in falsehood, they who discern but falsehood in the truth. They never attain the goal of truth, but abide in the pasture ground of error. 12. They who have rightly discerned the true in its truth and the false in its falsity. They attain the goal of truth and abide in the pasture ground of right thinking. This religious instruction was given by the teacher while he was in residence at Veluvana, and it was with reference to the announcement made by the chief disciples of Sanjaya's refusal to go to the teacher. From first to last the story is as follows. 8a. Life of the Buddha. Four incalculables and a hundred thousand cycles of time in the past hour. Teacher was born as a Braham prince in the city of Amar Avadi, and his name was Sumedha. After acquiring proficiency in all the arts, he renounced wealth, amounting to countless millions which he inherited on the death of his mother and father, retired from the world, adopted the life of an anchorite, took up his residence in the Himalaya country, and there won for himself by ecstatic meditation the supernatural powers. Now it came to pass on a certain day that Dipankara, master of the ten forces, set out from Sudasana monastery to go to the city Rama, and the populace came forth to clear the way. As Sumedha came flying through the air on that day, he observed that a road was being cleared. Therefore selecting for himself a portion of the road, which had not yet been cleared, when the teacher approached, he made of himself a bridge for him, spread his mantle of antelope skin in the mud, laid himself thereon, and said, Let not the teacher with his company of disciples tread upon the mud. Let him rather tread upon me, so let him proceed upon his journey. When the teacher beheld Sumedha, he said, Yonder prince is a nascent Buddha, four incalculables and a hundred thousand cycles of time hence. He will become a Buddha named Gautama. Thus did the teacher to Pankara prophesy regarding the Braham prince Sumedha. After to Pankara came the following Buddhas, Khandana, Mangala, Sumana, Ravada, Sabita, Anamadasi, Padma, Narada, Pajumadara, Sumedha. Sujata, Padasi, Athadasi, Damadasi, Siddhatha, Tissa, Fusa, Vipassi, Siki, Vasapu, Kakazanda, Kanikamana, and Kasapa. One after another, these twenty four Buddhas arose in the world and enlightened the world, and from each of them, the Braham prince Sumedha received the prophecy that he should one day become a Buddha. Now after Sumedha had fulfilled the ten perfections and the ten minor perfections and the ten major perfections, making in all thirty perfections, he was reborn as Vesantara, and in his existence as Vesantara he bestowed mighty alms which caused the earth to quake, and in that existence also he renounced both son and wife. When the term of life allotted to him was come to an end, he was reborn in the heaven of the two Zeta gods, and when he had remained in this state of existence during the term of life allotted to him, the deities of the ten thousand worlds assembled together and thus addressed him. The time is come, mighty hero, descend into the womb of your mother. Rescue the worlds of men and gods, discover the region of the deathless. Thereupon he made the five great observations, and passing from that state of existence, received a new existence in the royal household of the Sakyas. In this royal household he was brought up amid great splendor and in the course of time attained auspicious youth. He spent his youth in three mansions, appropriate to the three seasons of the year, enjoying splendor and majesty of sovereignty comparable to the splendor of the world of the gods. In the course of time it came to pass that, as he proceeded on three successive days to the garden to amuse himself, he beheld the three heavenly messengers, namely, 
a man worn out by old age, a man afflicted with disease, and a dead man. On each of the three days he returned to his palace, overcome with emotion. On the fourth day he beheld a man who had retired from the world and adopted the life of a monk. It were well for me to retire from the world and adopt the life of a monk, said he, conceiving a desire for the religious life. And with this thought in mind, he proceeded to the garden and spent the entire day sitting on the bank of the royal pool. While he sat there, the god Visakama approached him, disguised as a barber, and dressed him in rich apparel and adorned him with all manner of adornments. There also he received the message that a son had been born to him, Prince Rahila, and realizing the strength of affection for a son, he reflected, I must straightway break this bond, lest it become too strong for me. In the evening, as he entered the city, Kisagatami, daughter of his father's sister, pronounced the following stanza. Happy indeed is that mother, happy indeed is that father. Happy indeed is that wife whose husband is such a one as he. When he heard Kisagatami pronounce this stanza, he said, This woman has taught me where true happiness is to be found, and taking off a string of pearls, he sent it to her as a present. Having entered his own residence, he lay down on the royal couch, and as he lay there beheld the disgusting appearance of the nut girls asleep. Heartsick he roused his courtier Chana, caused his steed Kanthaka to be brought to him, mounted Kanthaka, and taking Chana with him as his companion, and surrounded by the deities of the ten thousand worlds, he went forth and made the great retirement. Proceeding to the bank of the river Anama, he retired from the world and adopted the life of a monk. Having adopted the life of a monk, he proceeded to Rajagaha and went about the city receiving alms. Then he retired to Pandava Mountain and seated himself in Pandava Mountain Cave. While he was sitting there, the king of Magadha came to him and offered to bestow his kingdom upon him, but this offer of the king he straightway refused. He promised the king, however, to visit his kingdom so soon as he should attain omniscience. Then he approached Alara and Dadaka, but after following their system of discipline, failed to win the attainment which distinguishes one who has attained Aradship. Thereafter, for a period of six years, he engaged in the great struggle. Early in the morning on the day of full moon of the month Vizaka he ate rice porridge presented to him by Sujata, caused his golden bowl to float on the river Naranjaura, and spent the day in Mahavani Grove in the various degrees of ecstatic meditation. In the evening he listened to the praise of his noble qualities bestowed upon him by Kala, king of the dragons, ascended the throne of wisdom, received the bundles of grass presented to him by Sathya, scattered the grass before him, and formed the following resolution, I will not Abandon this posture until I have ceased utterly to care for the things of this world and my heart has thus rid itself of the depravities. Thereupon he sat down facing the east, and before the sun had set overcame the host of Mara. In the first watch he acquired the knowledge of previous states of existence, in the second watch he acquired the knowledge of the vanishing of creatures from one state of existence and of their reappearance in Another, at the conclusion of the last watch he acquired the knowledge of the causes of existence, fathoming the depths of omniscience and acquiring the ten forces, the four subjects of confidence, and all of the noble qualities. For seven weeks he remained on the throne of wisdom, in the eighth week he seated himself under the goat herd's banyan tree and meditated upon the depths of the law finally arriving at misgivings as to his ability to preach the law to others. Straight away Sahampati Brahma, accompanied by the retinue of the ten thousand worlds with which Maha Brahma is wont to be accompanied, approached him and requested him to preach the law to others. Surveying the 
world with the eye of a Buddha, he acceded to Brahma's request. To whom? Pray, shall I first preach the law? thought he. Surveying the world, he became aware of the death of Alara and Dadaka. But remembering the devoted services of the five monks, he arose from his seat and went to Kasapura, meeting Apaka by the way and talking with him. On the day of full moon of the month Asalha he arrived at Isopatana in the Deer Park, at the place of residence of the five monks, and when the five monks addressed him improperly, he instructed them how properly to address him. Then he set in motion the wheel of the law, giving to drink of the deathless to a hundred and eighty millions of angels, but above all to the monk Anacondana. Having set in motion the glorious wheel of the law, on the fifth day of the half month he established all those monks in Aratship. On the same day also he perceived that the noble youth Yasa possessed the dispositions requisite for conversion, and when the noble youth Yasa left his house in disgust at what he saw during the night, he saw him and summoned him and made a monk of him, saying, Come, Yasa. In that same night also he caused him to attain the fruit of conversion, and on the following day caused him to attain Aratship. Afterwards he made monks of his fifty-four companions, employing the formula, Come, monks! And having made monks of them, he caused them to attain Aratship. There were thus sixty-one Arats in the world. Having kept residence during the season of the rains, and having celebrated the terminal festival, he sent out the sixty monks into all the world, saying, Go forth, monks, preaching and teaching. He himself proceeded to Ruvla, on the way thither, in Kapasuka Grove, instructing the thirty youths known as the Vadivayas. Of these, the least attained the fruit of conversion and the greatest attained the fruit of the third path all these youths he received into the order with a single formula, Come, monks! And when he had so done, he sent them out into all the world. Arriving at Ruvla, he performed three thousand five hundred miracles and converted Ruvla Kasapa, Nadi Kasapa, and Gya Kasapa. These were three brothers, ascetics who wore matted hair, with a following of a thousand disciples. These ascetics he instructed in the law. And, when he had so done, he received them into the order with a single formula. Come, monks! Seating them at Gaia Siza, he established them in Aratship. By preaching the fire sermon, then, attended by a thousand Araats, he went to Lathivana Garden near the city of Rajagaha, intending to redeem the promise he had given to King Dambisa-ura. The teacher has arrived, went forth the cry. Hearing the report, King Dambisa-ura approached with twelve Nahudas of Braham householders, and to him the Buddha preached the law in a pleasing manner, establishing the king, and eleven Nahudas of Brahmins in the fruit of conversion and one Nahuda of Brahmins in the refuges. On the following day he listened to the praise of his Noble qualities by Saka king of the gods disguised as a Brahmam youth, and then entered the city of Rajagaha. Having eaten his meal in the royal residence, he accepted the gift of Veluvana monastery and took up his residence there. And there it was that Sariputta and Malana came to him. And there it was that Sariputta and Malana came to him. And there it was that 